What is up, my gang? It is I, Carlton Flowers, your crypto pro. Yay! And I'm wondering what is dinging. Why is, I, I hear an iPhone ding. What in the world? Okay, so I've got two phones, actually. And this is the private phone, and then I've got the Samsung Galaxy Mega Ultra Humongo 22. That's my main phone. And uh, sometimes I get beeps, and I don't know which phone is trying to talk to me but today it's spam see i can't stand that we've locked your amazon account due to a billing issue it's always the same crap so then they get you to call this number and then it's you know somebody from outside of the u.s is trying to trick you into giving up your personal identifiable information which you should never do all right there have been enough changes on the chart that we need to get a quick follow-up because the price seems to be stymied, but there are other indications that could give clues as to where Bitcoin is about to go. But first and foremost, that is, this is not financial advice. No, it is not. Do not listen to a word that I say because you could end up living inside of a cardboard box on the side of the river. Okay, living on government cheese. So don't listen to me, my friends. All right, now we may jump into the information. We're going to look at the Bitcoin chart, four hour, one day, one week, and then look at the DJI and look at the DXY and then discuss some other YouTubers that are talking about action and try to sum it up and see if we can assess the probabilities of which direction that we could go. So here on the four hour chart, you can see here that we are still monkeying around uh, underneath the bottom of the flag so that we had this huge flag here formation and now we have a mini flag formation that is kind of forming down here where this one here it's a new flag here so I'm looking at this and bouncing up and down on the four hour we could come back up to the top of this and then come back down again and fail the bottom of this and really drop or we could fall out of it right now so what are the chances well right now this stochastic looks ugly and as i always tell you look to see what the price line returns at the extreme positions of the stochastic. In other words, we are at a peak here that corresponds with this price right here. Then we had an extreme dump on the, uh, not a dump, but we went to oversold, right? But we held, which said that this is a consolidation move. And it went down even further. We were still in the consolidation move. And then we move down, and then we bump up, and this, this coincides with the move back to the big purple line. Okay, and then we go down again to the oversold, and we get this massive drop. So that says that momentum is downward. Because we stayed in the oversold zone down here, bouncing around, not escaping from that negative momentum, right? And then, now, check it out. We go all the way back up here about to the 70 line. We didn't make it to the 80 line, so we never made it back up into the overbought zone, right? But here we are. We peaked out at about the 70 line. And that took us to exactly, exactly, as Chris from MM Crypto used to say, exactly, the Bitcoin price today went to exactly the bottom of the parallel trading channel. I mean, it's amazing. I drew this line long ago, right? There's the parallel channel. Do you see how exactly that this green doji candle wicked and Buried out right at the line. I mean, you can't make that stuff up, and it rejects. So that was the peak right here. And then we start going down again. And now we are at the bottom of this micro parallel trading channel, and we're about to fall off of this VPVR node, this chunk of node right here. That's where we're trading right now is within this node. And you can see it right here. So this is what price is effectively doing. It's staying within this volume node. VPVR means volume profile, visible range. In other words, that is the amount of volume that happens at a particular price instead of the volume that happens at a particular time. Okay, do y'all get that? 
So in other words, how much volume has ever traded at 23,000 for everything that we can see on this visible chart that goes all the way out to here? Well, it's this much right there. That's what your VPVR means. So we're bouncing around in this node. And these nodes where we stick out and have tons of trading volume, popular trading prices, we tend to stay stuck in those and then we bounce from one to the other. So right now, we're bouncing around within this node, but we could fail this node and drop down below. So there's a chance of this happening, you know, where we come out of that. Why? Well, look at the uh, stochastic there. Notice how that blue line is starting to curl away from the orange line. That is a gap that's starting to widen. First, it faked us out and made us think the blue line was going to come up and cross over that orange line. And then what did it do? It unfurled. That's what I call an unfurling. Now it's pointing back downward. And we also see that the MACD has gone from printing dark green bars to light green bars on the histogram, which means the volume is going back towards the zero line. And then the oscillators, which just crossed over bullish, now we see that the blue line is headed back towards the orange line, curling over, which could indicate a bearish crossing coming. All right, let's clear all of that. So right now, if I had to guess, and anything can happen, I would say 60-40 chances that we're dropping from here and going down lower. Now, where can it go? Well, we'll have to zoom out and look at the one-day chart to see if we can catch anything there. On the one day, let's scrunch this down a little bit, and we can clearly see our flag. There's the bear flag, rising wedge, whatever you want to call it. And this one looks like a little bit better. It can fool you, and I'll show you why. This looks like a bearish, I'm sorry, a bullish crossover. Does it not? The blue line has just crossed over the orange line. We are in the oversold zone, so it makes it look like, okay, it's wanting to come on up here and make a full cycle up again. But will it do that? I don't know. And here's why. Okay. We could come all the way up here, sure enough, and it might just stay within this volume node here. But then what else can happen might surprise you. It might absolutely fake us all out. Let's clear this. Okay. And I'm going to show you what happens when the stochastic stays stuck in the oversold zone. This is very possible. Let's pull some history in so I can show you these examples. So here is our potential bullish cross right there, right? But what is the MACD doing? You notice how the MACD is printing bars in the negative on the histogram? And you notice how we had a peak, a flat peak, a peak, and then we had a kind of a peak here. What's the momentum looking like? It looks like it's going in the negative direction here as we're printing red in the histogram. Now, what can happen to flip this situation and turn this into a fake out? Well, I'll tell you. It's whenever the stochastic gets buried and stays underneath. Uh, and when the stochastic does that, it's when the MACD has an extended period of time where we're in the red on the histogram. I'll show you what I mean here. Here's a perfect example right here. See this whole zone? We double dipped. We went green, red. And you would think the next is green, right? But nope, it double dipped. It went red again. Now look at the stochastic up above. So you would think after this red, we're coming up, we're about to go green, momentum, everything was looking good right here. And what happened? Reversal. Then several, several, several fake outs. And we go right back to the bottom of the stochastic cycle. And until this went back to the green, it stayed down here. And then finally, we come out of that and we have this green area right here, which the next, next area, we go into the red and you have your dip. All right. Um... Let's see here. So right now, we have this area that is in the red. There's the histogram bars. And we don't know yet if this is going to come back to the zero line and go green or if it's going to stay underneath. We just don't know. So now we're going to have to look at uh, the one-week chart so we can get a clue. Because on the, on the four-hour chart, it's looking very bearish. We're going to go down within the next few four-hour uh, candles. Overall, this uh, candle here for the one-day chart still could go either way. It's either going to be bullish or it's going to unfurl, fake out, and flip. All right, enough of that. Let's go to the one week. 
Okay, one week chart right there. Let's scrunch her down a little bit so you can see it. We'll put some uh, range in here so we can get a good idea of these nodes. And here we have it. Now, the one week does not look good. Why? Because where we were talking about the bullish crossover on the one day chart, we have a bearish crossover about to happen on the one week chart. That's bigger and nastier because this is a larger uh, time frame for the candles that we are dealing with. Let me scrunch this down a little bit. You can see my trend line on there. And see, this is the overarching factor here. This takes precedence over everything. Until we come out of this trend here, hmm. Lower highs on this uh, MACD, look, it just keeps bouncing around on that line. And notice how we came up and it looked like we were going to come up above the trend line. But what's happening here? That's about to cross over, guys. So here is the node, the cluster we are trading is right in here. Let's match it up, see if it engulfs it. There it is. Notice that the big dashed red line is just at the ledge of where we drop off into zero volume. And then you got this huge cluster down here. Uh, that's why people are saying 10,000 is possible, which I don't know. And let me tell you right now, the bottom could be in. If you look at uh, what's his face with Crypto Crew University, uh, what's his name, Mark? He thinks that the bottom is in and he claims that the charts don't lie and that all the various indicators that he's shown in the past, in the history of Bitcoin, that we always have hit the bottom when we get these certain indications, which might be true, but that doesn't mean that it's always going to be that way. But he seems to be 100% sure that the bottom is in and that we could glance off of you know the same low as the previous uh, dip there to 17,000, but then that's going to be it and we're moving up. I say you better be careful because these events happening around the world could override the chart because uh, we can't 100% depend on the repeating of history. Even though the chart gives us the indications, and I take that as precedence over the news, but there's still too much potential uh, black swan material out there that could cause this to play out like it is. And with this thing right here, if this crosses over and we go for a full cycle downstairs and it doesn't flip and unfurl, yeah, we could go down here. It's possible. So what's my advice? My advice is just be careful. Don't go bet in the farm because we don't know what's going to happen. You know, you could do one of two things. You could miss the absolute bottom that has already happened and miss the chance of investing and it blows up from here. Uh, or you could go in head first and think that, uh, What's his face is right on his videos and go watch him. I encourage you to go see his videos. Crypto Crew University, whatever it's called. Somebody posts in the comments his name. Is it Mark? Um, the only thing that uh, I'm wary of is when people are selling memberships, when they're you know giving Bitcoin price predictions, and then you're also selling uh, memberships to your club. Uh, just be careful. But otherwise, his videos are interesting. So um, with the indicators right here, I'm, I'm not doing anything until I see this play out. It's just too risky. You know, your risk factor is, is enormous because looking at this chart, I would say 60, 40 chance that, that this is going to play out. We're going to jump down into this lower zone. And I'm not saying beyond a shadow of a doubt. Again, it's just about the probabilities. So uh, unless you're in a clear zone of a bull market, like this is when I start to play in that area. Um, I didn't play much. I did play a little bit in this area, but I hung on too high and I missed it and got caught and didn't sell anything up here because I believed all the hype that we were going up even higher. I do a lot better trading and swing trading during a bear market than in a bull market. Uh, I mean a bull market rather than a bear market. I'm sorry. Uh, it's just a lot harder to do this stuff in a bear market, but you have to be careful because you're going to tie up your money. And that's why they always say don't invest more than you can afford to lose or to tie up and not have that money available to pay the bills. Okay, uh, last but not least, I did promise that we would run up and look at DXY and DJI, Dow Jones. Look at this, guys. Boom. I mean, wow. 
Look at that crossover there on MACD happening and the stochastic head straight south. We got rejected along this trend line. We are trading below the 200 EMA and momentum is going down and this will affect the crypto market. It's going to affect it. And uh, from what I have uh, observed, most of the prognosticators are saying that we got a long way to go for this dive on DJI. Here it is on the one week. We're about to cross over there. Absolute rejection on this trend line. Um, massive uh, peak here and then coming down and then we come up again and this could be the end of it on the MACD where it starts to head back down because we have a light green candle, a light green bar after the dark green bar. And we're falling away from this point of control here. We're already well below it. Momentum is heading downward. So that's not looking too good. Let's look at the DXY and then we're done. There's a little bit of a peak here. We got a couple red candles. But again, right now, it looks like it doesn't want to come out of overbought. We're stuck up here. You see that? We got a double hump camel and an extremely bullish looking MACD. Well, what's it look like on the one day? Let's look at the one day and the one week. Wow, man. So it looks like it's approaching a peak. Maybe this will curl over at some point, but it's still headed upwards. Oh, man, the MACD says it's just getting started. If this is any indication, this could full cycle up just like it did on this previous run. And we could be bouncing around up here where it stays stuck. Look at history. It's happened before. Not to say that it will happen again, but look at this. Do you see that? One, two, three, four times it reversed and stayed up in the overbought zone. So we could have that same action happen right here. And DXY could clown Bitcoin. I'm telling you what, it could be ridiculous. It could be very, very ugly. Um, last is one week. Wow. The one week says the party is just getting started. Absolute bearish, I mean bullish uh, golden cross of the 200 and the 50 EMA. Sitting on a green candle. Stochastic pointed straight up. MACD off the doggone chart. Look at this romp. And this is because they keep printing dollars, man. Look at that. That's just insane. So that's where we're going. Um, let me know what you think about that. Be careful. The yellow caution light is on. Um, please, uh, if you would please to like, uh, what is it? To like, subscribe, and comment to Crypto Pro Channel. I appreciate you. And a big shout out to my man Carl for the fantastic super thanks of $10. I appreciate you and that's why I'm putting in this work because of my supporters like brother Carl. I appreciate that and I will keep you updated. Carl, you may ask any questions that you want. I will answer your specific questions uh, posted in the comments. Let me know and I will bring it up on the next video. Well, thank you guys. If you made it this far, you are serious about your trading. This is Carlton, the one and only crypto pro. I am out.